It is so good to see you in the house, Lord, today at Solitude. We uh, are so thankful and grateful that you are here today. And um, we'd like to welcome you and then those that are listening online and listening to the radio and know that our heart is for uh, the Holy Spirit of God to fill each and every one of us today. God says in his word in Psalms 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Selah. And then in verse 10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We want to remind you this morning, regardless of the mountain that you're having to climb, or if you feel like you're being you're drowned in, in waters of uh, the, the tempest is just going crazy in our, in our worlds, in our personal lives, there is a God that loves you. There is a God who is our fortress and our strength. And in Him and through Him, all things are possible. Amen? So we're here to celebrate Him today. We're here to celebrate His awesomeness, His goodness, His greatness, and everything that He is. And we invite you to join with us in worship. If you please stand to your feet. We're going to pray, and then we're going to worship the holy, awesome God that He is, for He is worthy, and that's what we're called to do. So let's pray. Father in heaven, God, we love you. We thank you. <clears throat> we are so thankful for the fact that you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross, taking on the, the pain and the incredible cruelty of that cross when he took on our sin to pay the price that we could not afford to pay. So, God, we thank you for salvation. We thank you, Lord, that for every person that is here today, and we pray if there's anyone who has never accepted you as Savior, God, that today would be the day for their new birth. And, Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit is welcome in this place. We invite you to, to be amongst our presence. And, God, we pray that you would fill our, our very hearts, our voices, our minds with everything that you have. As we declare how awesome you are, God, we just pray that you are lifted high. Lord, we love you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Let's worship him. Let's sing it out, church. Great are you, Lord. Come on. Great are you, Lord, mighty and strength. You are faithful. Shout to God, all creation, 
that today. Worship Him. Sing this chorus. place on a Sunday morning. God, we can come here and be together just as your word has taught us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, but to come together for the purpose of worship of you, for the reading of your word, for the proclamation of the gospel, and Lord, for the opportunity to worship you. So I pray now for each of us individually, God, as we have an opportunity now to express our heart to you in worship through music. And Lord, I pray in a few minutes for your word. May it Come forth and speak to our hearts today. And Lord, I pray that you will be glorified in all things. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All my words fall short. I got nothing new. How could I express? All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do but Every song must end And you never do Just your voices, church So I do
you have a hallelujah this morning for our Savior? Sing that chorus again, church. Just your voice. So I
Father our God in heaven, Lord, you are holy. You are good. You are great. Father, we stand before you today and worship your holy name, lifting your name up. And Father, we pray that our worship that is in this place today, God, will glorify you. We pray that our hearts are closer to you, Lord, and we invite your Holy Spirit to fill each and every one of our hearts today. And as our pastor comes now, God, would you fill him with your spirit? Would you speak on his behalf? Would you use him as your mouthpiece today? Bless Brother Joe and fill him up. Lord, we love you so much and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. Awesome to worship God in this place today. I hope you've been blessed by that already. Hey, about three weeks ago, I was driving in my car. I was coming down Highway 75 right in front of Piggly Wiggly. Dawson and Kinley were in the back seat and, and we were singing that song, Holy Forever. And it was just a moment. You know how it is every once in a while. You just get to have a moment. It was one of those moments. And, and they heard the song and, and on, come on the radio. And they said, hey, turn that up. So I turned it up and we were singing that. And as we were singing that, and we were singing that holy forever, it's just like the Spirit of God just impressed up in my heart and just kind of said this, Joey, be that. Be holy. And I just kind of went, oh trying to get a grip on that and try to think about that for a moment. And I knew First Peter talked about that. So I got home, opened up the Bible, and began to read. So today we're going to be in First Peter chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 13 through about 18 or 19. And you're going to hear that in there. The word holy is in there four times in two different verses. So we're going to look a little bit in front of that and a little bit behind that. And we're going to seek that out, what it means to be holy. Now here's what I'm going to tell you about this today as we think about this. Uh, many times, many times... People say this to me and, and to, to pastors a lot. Help me find what God wants me to do. Okay? What does God want me to do? I want to know what God wants me to do. And we, we all have a place for that. We understand. We want to know what we need to do. But before he wants us to do anything, he wants us to be. Okay? He wants us to be. He's more interested in my being than he is my doing. Because when my being gets right, my doing falls. Do you understand that? Sometimes we get the cart before the horse on that. We try to start doing before we be. So I want you to think about that. And that sounds funny to use the grammar that way. But that's kind of where we're at with that. So we're just going to look at that. We're going to think about that here uh, for the next few minutes. And you're going to hear God's word. And I hope that it, that it blesses you. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in your behavior. Because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. If you address the Father as Father, the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay on earth, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold or from the futile way of, that was inherited from your forefathers, but with the precious blood as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Father, thank you for your word today. God, just to be able to read it and, and Lord, to, to think of the thoughts that you have given unto us. Lord, I thank you. And I pray right now for every one of us. May we hear, God, uh, you afresh and anew today. May we feel the uh, anointing of the Spirit of God in this place. And Lord, I pray that our minds would be open. Not so much to this what you have for us to do, but who we are as people and what it is that you have for us to be. And for us to understand in this moment what it means, Lord, today to be holy. So I pray that you, you bless God. May we today understand what it means to be holy because you are holy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I say, we look at that, we think about that. What is it that God wants me to do? What is it that, that God desires for me to be? And I want you to think about these with me. Just look at these two words, be holy, because we see them listed there in verse 16. You shall be holy for I am holy. So be a little bit just to think, to exist. To exist and be present in the moment. It's a present tense word that means now. 
It means to, to be something, but to be it now. It don't mean to be it tomorrow. It don't mean to be it what I was. It means right now in this moment, be. Okay? It exists. And it carries with it that thought of the presence of I am. The same presence. It's interesting to hear Peter say to them in that moment, be, <laughs> I am holy. Man, how many of us would ever want to say, I am holy? Because we would normally want to say, I am not holy. Okay? But here's, I want to tell you something today. And I want you to get this. We believe God is holy. Does anybody believe God's holy? Do you believe God's holy? We, we read it in the Word a while ago. Revelations chapter 4 verse 8 also states just what Isaiah did long ago. When, it, when it, in there it says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, who was, who is, and who is to come. So I want you to think about that with me. All the way, way back in the Old Testament, we're seeing God as holy, holy, holy. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you this just to know this. The Holy Spirit is just as holy as God the Father. Amen. And He is the same person. Right. He's just in a different uh, uh, component of the Godhead. But the Holy Spirit is this. The Holy Spirit is God. Yeah. Okay, now listen. We know from the book of John that He says He lives in us. We know this. It says He lives in us. At the point of salvation, the Spirit of God comes and indwells me. And if he is indwelling me, it means this. Him in me makes me a holy dwelling place of God on this earth. I don't know about that. That just makes me shake. That gives me chills and it makes me shake. To think that the holy God is now living inside of me. And he wants me to be holy just as he is holy. And he said, I am that. I have been declared that. I have been said this. So there's just two things and it comes to mind. And I thought about this earlier. Is there's this kind of positional holiness that we're just granted. Okay. Granted, declared holy by God at salvation. We have been said to be holy. And then what Peter's going to give us here is this idea of a practical holiness that's worked out of our lives each and every day of our life. How does that work? How does that unfold? How does that come apart for us to understand the be? I'm sorry. There's a holy in this statement too. Be holy. Holy means this. To be perfect. To be pure. To be untainted by evil or sin. And to be set apart to the purpose of God's glory. So that's what he says to us. How can we even fathom such as that? Because we know, hey, we've all sinned. And we understand that and we say that. And, and for the most part, we just think it's okay just to continue on in that walk. But I want to tell you something. There's something to think about beyond and uh, above where we tend to want to live. Okay, and here's what Peter's going to say to us. Be holy, for I am holy. Holy, for us, is to mean this. A clean mind, a pure heart, and a grateful spirit. That's a part of being holy. A, a, a clean mind, a pure heart, and a grateful spirit. To reflect the presence of God in us and with us at all times. So I want you to think about that with me. For us, how we live life. How we go about trying to do what we do. God desires for us to be holy where we are. To be holy as we live. And it's, it's, not, it's not so that he will like me more. Or he will accept me better. It's because he already has liked me more. And accepted me better. And placed me into a position. And put his spirit. His very presence within me. And now he just wants to let that work its way out. So that's an awesome thought to me. To try to, to be able to grasp. And to think about it. So. What can we learn? Be holy for God is holy. Verse 13. Therefore. Prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Be holy. And this is a word of what you can understand these verses. In your commitment. 
Okay? There's commitment to this process. Because here's what he's going to say. I want you to be holy. And here's what he's going to say to us as he begins to take us to this place where he's going to drop it on us in verse 15 and 16. He says, therefore, in that sense you have been saved. In the first 12 verses talks about our salvation and how we're saved by the blood of Jesus and how it's imperishable and it's unchangeable and it's unmovable. And he's going to say, now because of that, prepare your minds. Christ in you. Prepare your minds to be able to understand Christ in you. The Holy Spirit is in you if you've been born again. Prepare your minds for that to bring about some action. Now the words in the King James says gird your loins. And what it meant was is to take your garment which you have on and to wrap it around you good and tight. And they would gird it because right at the center of your loins because they thought that was where all the knowledge of, and the heart of a person come from. So they gird your loins so you can be active, so you can be moving, so you can be about where you need to go. So he's telling us in this place of a commitment to prepare our minds. And it's like this, roll up your sleeves. That's kind of a term you would get for it in our vernacular. Roll up your sleeves. It means get with it. Roll up your sleeves. Get into your mind that you are an instrument of God placed on this earth to be a holy being. Because he has saved you and he's put you into that place. Then he says keep sober in spirit. That means this. It means to keep calm in your heart. It means to stay calm. It don't mean to be a person who's just always wow all over the place. You know. It means this. hey get Get yourself about you. Okay? Stay calm in this moment and understand that. And then I love this word, fix your hope on the grace to be revealed to you. And this is all part of us understanding a commitment on our part of where we're going to go. So that we can understand and we can live what it means for us to be holy as God is holy. Fix your hope. It means there is kind of like this, a purposeful trusting. It means to set my hope, to fix my hope on something that's going to come. And here's what he says of all things he could have said to us in that moment. He says, fix your hope on grace. Yeah. On the grace of God that has been brought to you in this moment. Set your mind on it, count on it, be a part of it in this place. Because here's what I want you to know. He says, in all that I'm going to do, I want you to understand. At the revelation of Jesus Christ, you're going to know this grace that it has even greater than you know now. And if you've been saved, you can sing the song Amazing Grace and understand it. It's amazing grace, okay? Because it's amazing that God would take someone like me and save them from their sins and place his Holy Spirit within them. That's amazing. That he would give me grace. That he would be graceful to me. That he would be graceful to any of us. It's amazing. But here's what he says. Fix your mind. Fix your heart. Fix your focus on this fact that in the revelation of Jesus, there's going to be an unbelievable amount of grace poured upon you. And then he says this, and it's just verse 15 caught my attention in this. But like the Holy One who called you. But like the Holy One who called you. Understand this in this place right here. In this place of a commitment. God called you. Not just to do something, but to be something. A holy being on this planet that belongs to the person of Christ. Who is filled with the spirit of God. Who lives with the purpose to honor God in a great and an awesome way. Be committed to the place of holiness. Hmm. When is the last time that jumped through your brain? When is the last time it has crossed your mind that you are to be on this planet a holy being living in the presence of, of many people so that your life all of a sudden radiates the glory of God? Now, I didn't mean to tell you this, but I'm going to tell it anyway, okay? Because it comes to mind. I take it from God. Thursday night, Karen Davidson, right back here. Raise your hand, Karen. She's right there. She was baptized at Gunnersville Lake Thursday night at 6 o'clock. And she asked me if I would do that. And she said, I know that's not the way we normally do it. That's just the way I feel led. That, that, and uh, if you can, it's okay to say it's been a long time coming. She's been working on this and God's been working on her for a long time. And I said, yes, ma'am, we'll, we'll do that. It was awesome. So as we get down there, I'm just like uh, trying to process this moment. And it was pretty awesome for me. So there's people over there swimming. You know, they're doing their thing. There's people charcoal cooking out. And so here we are. And she's like got on this white dress gown and she's got uh, 
I don't know, it was a real pretty outfit. She said, don't worry, I got a swimming attire underneath. I'm all good. And, and so we wade out into the water, and all of a sudden we start a thing. And I glanced to my left, and everybody that was on that beach anywhere was watching. Clued in. I mean, hawk-eyed. You know, and we did the baptism. And when she came up out of the water, everybody on the beach was going. Hey. And I just went, that's a wow. That's, right. that, that's a wow. Because all of a sudden, you're demonstrating something greatly of God. And you talk about public. I mean, it's in a public state park. You know, that, so that's interesting. But here, here's what I want you to think about that in this place. We all need to have a place where we live our lives for the glory of God to be seen. And when that glory of God is seen in us and that the Spirit of God is seen in us, there needs to be this commitment in our place that we want to say, God, I want to know what it means to be holy. Hey, I was going to share with this at the end, but I want to share this with you right now. It was interesting. In the writing of Adrian Rogers, he said something about holiness. He said, we are to live holy lives. Now, when we talk about holiness, he said, Baptists get a little nervous. I mean, we don't mind being saved, but we're not real keen on being holy. We're interested in heaven but not holiness. We're interested in health, but not holiness. We're interested in happiness, but not holiness. We may even be interested in helpfulness, but not many of us are interested in holiness. How many of us say, Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. He said, I had the privilege a few years ago, and this was in the 90s, of going and spending a day in prayer with Dr. Billy Graham and some other men. We met at a hotel in Dallas for the purpose of spending a day in prayer and sharing and seeking the face of the Lord. As we were sitting around the table sharing, Billy Graham said something that I shall never forget. He looked around at the rest of us and said this, Gentlemen, I long to be holy. I want to be a holy man. Pray for me that I may be holy. I want you to think about that. He could have said, pray for the next crusade. Pray for people that will come. Pray for those who may be saved. But here's what he said. He understood something. He said, pray that I may be a holy person. Do you understand the power in being a holy person on this planet? Be holy. Verse 14 says, as obedient children, do not be conformed to your former lusts, which were yours in your ignorance. Be holy, and here's the phrase, in your character. In your character. Obedient children there is speaking of relationships. It's speaking of relationships. Relationships between a parent and a child. It's speaking of relationships of, of children to parents, of students to teachers. Obedience in this sentence means this. Being submissive and to apply to the ways of the teacher. To the parent. To the one that you are be, to be submissive to. And we don't like that in our society. That's not a part of who we are. We find that causing even struggles within family now. That there needs to be no order. And no one who wants to, to be the one who brings down the wrath. To, bring the, to keep everybody so to speak in line. But here's what he says. As obedient children... As obedient children, bring yourself to this place. And he says that you will not be conformed to your former lust. And here's what he's saying. Don't be like you used to be. You used to have this nature that now has been changed by the presence of God in you. Don't be that anymore. You don't have to be that anymore. You have been saved from that and you've been given a new nature. You've been given a divine nature. Peter even says that in his second book. He says, you have been given a divine nature of God placed within you. So in this place, in this place of character, he says, don't be conformed to your former lust. That means fashioned as unto. Don't be like, don't just be like you used to be. Don't look at yourself and go, well, that's just the way I am because that's who I've always been. God wants you to be something greater. He wants you to be something beyond. He wants you to be far different than you are. He is calling someone today who will say, as Billy Graham would have said, let's let me be holy. Amen. What does that mean even? What does that mean to you in this place and in this moment? I just want to know that place to be holy. So he's looking at it and he says, don't be as you used to be. 
Lust here just means desires and cravings and longings for the things of the world. He says, don't be that anymore because you have been given something getter. So, instead of that, he says, be holy. Listen to verse 15 and 16. But like the Holy One who called you, he be holy yourselves in all your behavior. Because it is written, you shall be holy For I am holy. Here's the phrase. Be holy in your conduct. He desired uh, the desire to reflect God's holiness in your life. Be holy. He says here. Because you have been called. And be holy yourselves in all of your conduct. That means all of your behavior. That means in all of your talking. All of your speaking. All of your engagements with other people. He said bring that to a whole new level. Bring that to a place where all of a sudden you can know this place of the holiness of God. And he's looking at that and he says that. I love it when he said all of this. And then he says because it is written. That just waited me last night. Because it is written. He said, because it is written, it was said in the book of Leviticus. There's a place to read. Just dig into some good old Leviticus and spend some time there. Okay? But in Leviticus, in in three different places, Moses is telling the people, be holy because God is holy. And he was talking to them in that day about their character. And they did not have in their day the presence of the Holy Spirit that we have in our day to indwell us to bring about that holiness. So I want to tell you there's a place for us to be able to know what it means to be holy, to surrender ourselves, to give ourselves unto the person of God so that he can live within me so that the holiness can come through. So last week, um, I picked up Dawson, my grandson. He came home with me. So we come into the house and I headed to the back to change so he and I could do something. And he did what he normally does when he comes, does, what he normally does when he comes to my house. He runs to the refrigerator and he gets him a popsicle. Okay. And somehow he can look through the paper and tell what color it is. I can't figure that out yet. Okay. So he got my favorite. An orange. And he come running into my bedroom as I'm changing. He says, look, Papa Joe, look what I got. I said, man, that's probably the last one in the box. He said, yep, it is. And I said, okay. And he said, you want to lick? And I said, no, I don't want to lick. I want the whole thing. He said, uh-uh. He said, you can have a lick, but you can't have the whole thing. And I said, well, I want the whole thing. He said, okay. And he just turned and walked away eating his popsicle. Okay. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, another one of those times that like the Holy Spirit just nudged me and said, uh-huh, you know how I feel now. And I went, huh? And he said, I want all of you. I just don't want a lick. I want all of you. I want you to be holy. Because I'm holy. I want you, Joey, to understand what it means to be holy. For I am holy. I want all of you. And I want to say, I want to be holy. I want to know what it means to live filled with the presence of God. Walking in the Spirit of God, filled by the presence of God, knowing this place holy in your conduct. Because it is written, be you holy, for I am holy. 17, 18, and 19. Just fathom these thoughts quickly. If you address as father the one who impartially judges according to each man's work, conduct yourselves. That goes ties with what we just read. Conduct yourselves in fear during your time of your stay on earth. That was just interesting to me to hear that. Conduct yourself in a way during your time on earth. Like, oh, that's just why you're on earth. Because now you're going to be in eternity. Which was... Ask me to set my mind on something, okay, different. And then the verse, word in verse 18. Knowing. Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers. But you were inherited. You were brought. You were redeemed with the precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless the blood of Christ be holy 
in your knowledge and in your understanding. Because something he says here in verse 18, knowing. That word knowing. And it's not the word for faith. It is not the word that we derive the word faith from. It is the word that's simply E-D-I-O, which is expressed as I do. Okay? And it means to see with your eyes, to perceive with your senses, to discern uh, and to discover what needs to be and what already is. Hang on to that a minute. So think about that. What he said was in this moment. He said, I want you to, to know something. I want you to understand something. I want you to hear it. I want you to perceive it. I want you to see it. I want you to sense it. I want you to be aware of it. Because here's what God has done for you. What he says, he has, I have redeemed you. That means he has bought you back from where you once were. He said, I have taken you from being a sinful creator, creator, creation on your way to hell to being a person who has been saved, born again, and dwelt by the Spirit of God. And you have been freed from the power of sin. You have been freed from the power of Satan. You have been freed from the power of yourself to live a life now that is holy unto God because of the precious blood of Jesus. And what he's saying is, know it, know it, know it. Okay, we can't any other way say that. It's not something you're going to dream about. It's something you're going to know. That means in the deep recesses of your mind, you see it, you sense it, you feel it, you understand it. And you can say this, I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus. A perfect lamb who was slain on a cross. His blood was shed for me to know the forgiveness of my sin. And I can know that. And he says, I want you to know it, understand it in your mind, in your senses, who you are. So that you can grasp that thought. Oh man. D.O. Moody said these words. It was cool to me. A holy life will make a deep impression. A lighthouse blows no horns. They just shine. They just shine. A holy life for God just shines. How little people um, know about the holiness of um, and they think that it's dull. And C.S. Lewis says, when you meet the real thing, it's irresistible. Think about the holiness of God and where you are and how you live. Do you know today you've been redeemed? You've been bought back? Do you know that? I mean, do you know that? Do you, even, do you sense that? Does the Holy Spirit within you give witness to you, as I read a few weeks ago from Romans 8, that you are a child of God? The Holy Spirit reveals that to you, whether you are not or whether you are. And I think that's an awesome place to be able to know. So here's what I want to tell you today. To sum all this up, I want you to know something. God is saying today to me, you worry about a lot of things, okay? You stress over a lot of things. Be holy. Be holy. I don't want a lick out of your life. I want the whole thing. I don't just want to be a part. I want to be the whole thing. I want to live within you mightily. So that the holiness of who I am. Is revealed into this earth today. Through who you are as a person. Man that seems to scramble our brain. Because we just think about singing about the greatness of God, the greatness of God, the greatness of God. Ooh, it's awesome. How awesome. I agree. How awesome is the Lord Most High? <laughs> How awesome is He in you? Because that's where He is. That's where He works. That's what He's looking for. People today who would say, you know, I'm not going to worry so much about all this stuff anymore. And I'm going to have a heart that just says this. Lord, show me something. Show me how to be. How, many, how to be. Be. Holy. Let's pray.